Hello y'all on YouTube, this is Rob with Rob's Nerdy Knives. I have a very interesting unboxing for you. Something I've been waiting for, it's a pre-order. Something coming in from uh, Blaze Golden. It's Golden Works Design. I don't know if you're familiar with that. They had a pre-order for something, a knife that he made called a standard, and I believe this is it. So let's take a look. This is my first unboxing production of the knife. So I'm gonna just open this up, make sure it's, uh, yeah, I think we're all good right there. Today I'm opening up with my relative, EMP EDC relative. This is the 20CV um, clip point version, Tonto, clip point Tonto, dual grind, beautiful hollow grind. Love this knife, it's one of my favorites. I think he still had some on his website when I last checked. He had a few that were still available, so go check it out if you've been trying to get it. I know a lot of people look for it and they keep selling out places, but every once in a while he has some extra inventory and he drops it when he can, okay? So, here we go. All right, so here's the box. Let's see if we got anything in here. Uh, it looks like it's just a receipt. I'm gonna take a quick look at that. All right, very cool. He says, thanks on there. So this is the Golf Texture, dark bead blasted handle. Like the packaging, nice little, little plastic cover on there. Keep it nice and sealed. All right, here we go. Golden Design Works. That's kind of a cool box. I like that. All right, let's open this up. Oh, this is really cool. I like that. Nice little box here. Beautiful. Very cool. Put this off to the side. It's kind of cool a ziplock. I like the little stamp on here. That's kind of a nice touch. It's unique. All right, so I did order the extra hardware. So he gave me some extra hard work because I did want to have that just in case, especially if I take it apart. All right, so we got a little, 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 little packet here. What do we got? Oh, we got some stickers. Nice. I love stickers. Oh, I got a few of them. That's really cool. Definitely going up on the board for sure. All right, so this is thank you for the purchase, your standard warranty, and this is your COA or Origin M390. Uh, let's see here. Stone washed. All right. Not a Dama Steel. I got just a plain Jane one, which is fine by me, because I like that. All right, so let's take a look at here. Oh, also comes with a nice little cloth, too. Very, very cool. All right, we'll put all that away in here. Put it off to the side, and here we go. All right, so this is the knife right here. This is the Golden Design, our Golden, um, Golden Design Works, or Golden Works, oh my God. Golden Design, um, wow. Let's try that again. And let's just look at that. Golden Design Works. There we go. Golden Design Works. I think I can talk, right? So this has a beautiful titanium um, um, inlay, or if you will, um, scale on top of this. You can change these out. I could change the scale from this to, if I wanted a different texture, right? And so it's nice and chamfered all the way around. Chamfered up here, the edges aren't there. That's nice, no sharp edges all the way around. It has beautiful jimping all the way across up here. So you can see it's a front flipper and it has a thumb hole for, or a fuller hole, whatever you wanna call it. A beautiful, I love this. This is a titanium, this is a mill titanium clip. Nice little jump up here. Oh, that's nice, I like that. Rounded, no sharp edges, beautiful. Now it's not a lefty. Um, which, you know, I'm, it's a bummer, but the way he does this, it looks like, yeah, if he were to get lefty scales, he could put lefty scales and then you could reverse it. So I'm sure that could be a possibility at some point because the way it is, it goes into the scale, not the knife itself. So once, if he were to do that, he could reverse that. That's cool. It is a liner lock, as you can see that within the scales. So that's cool. All right. And this one is, oh, you can see it right there, M390 blade steel. Nice. All right, so, you know, fairly about four inches. So let's go ahead and give it a flick. Let's see how it goes, ready? All right, there it is. Nice flat grind all the way up. Pretty thick, robust blade. I do like that. Pretty sharp edge. Really nicely, nice even edge all the way around. Down here, grip. I got medium, medium, large hands. They're large widthwise, medium lengthwise. Got a full grip, got a little room here. So I think uh, extra large hands, easy if you choke up. Easy, extra, extra, double extra, three extra large hands. A squeeze grip, this doesn't dig in. I don't feel any hot spots down there. It's not sharp digging in or anything, so that's cool. I like this edge. Nice little satin finish here, but then a stone wash finish on this edge. It is a flat ground, heavy, robust to a nice tip, so it's good for poking into cat food, dog food, mulch, fertilizer, whatever you're putting on your yard, right? Cases of water. All right, so let's see here. Nice little cutaway in here. There's no relief, but it looks like you have a good angle, so let's see how this works. 
Okay, so that does drop pretty sharp, and I might have just cut myself because I didn't really take advantage of that. There we go. Yeah, so put your finger in there so you can catch it so you don't get that galatine feeling. Now let's go ahead and try the front flip. Oh, that works nice. All right, let's see. Can you do a reach around? You can if you had longer fingers. I have shorter fingers, so it's a little harder for me. Okay, you can do the thumb flick nicely, and let's do the reverse flick nicely. That is cool. I do like that. All right, so it's nice and rounded here. No sharp edges on top. That's a nice little touch. I love the jimping up here. You can choke up with extra jimping for a nice precision push cut. You can come up here for a nice work cut. This is a beautiful drop point. I do like the drop point blade on here. That's nice. It drops a little bit here and you got to come to a point. The edge is really nice and sharp. Good sharpening choil. Um, yeah, so comes down to a thin edge, sure, but is it a super slicer? It's not super thick. This looks like it's going to be 0.12, maybe point, yeah, I'm guessing 0.12 or maybe just between 0.11 and 0.12 inches. I'm going to guess when we look at it. The thickest part is going to be right here with this nice swedge on top, which does allow for a little navigation of your cut. It's not a huge swedge, but if you do need to turn a little bit, you could, especially if you're cutting through something thick. feels pretty solid. The engagement on here looks like we're good 40%. Maybe 40, 50%, yeah, solid. Let's see, any blade rock? No, it's in there nice and solid. Let's go ahead and drop that again. And let's see how it click, clicks in. All right. Pretty solid, let's look at the centering. Uh, it looks fairly centered, I think. Yeah, pretty close. I don't know, we'll see. I'll have to play with it a little bit, right? I believe it's cage ceramic ball bearings on this, so that's nice. And, okay, that works really nice. Can you, yeah, you can absolutely do that. So you can put your thumb right there in the corner and just flick it, so that works really nice. And you can, you can do the, you know, on the side, pushing it forward as well. So, yeah, it's a little tight. It's, it's made more for the, that fuller um, thumb hole kind of flick. So it's a little tighter than I would for a, a front flipper. And as I do with, typically with front flippers, front flippers, I, you know, sometimes I get them really nicely uh, set because they're primarily a front flipper and the thumb hole is more of a secondary thing. And it does work really nice left-handed. Let's see here. Yep. This is more of get your meat of your finger in there. I think you can get your fingernail in there as well. It has a nice sound to it. Listen to that. Kind of a ting to it. Let's do that again. Well, not here, but let's do it this way. Yeah, that's cool. These are titanium scales, so it feels pretty light. Let's look at the inside any milling. Yeah, definitely some milling relief. You can see that in there on both sides. Really nice. Oh, it's got a little golden design logo in there. Really cool. I do like that. Steel bar insert with an over, well, I don't know if it's over travel, so you don't need it here with because you've got the steel. I mean, it's a bolster lock, or not a bolster, sorry, a liner lock, so you don't need a steel bar over travel stop here. That would be ridiculous, right? It'd be over, overkill for something like this since you already have these. But I like the fact you can change these scales out and you can have different ones if you wanted to. You could even probably get rid of the, the gray and make this all like a plain titanium and a you know, titanium like inserts. I think that would be really cool and look really nice on here as well. But I do like the smoky gray. I like that more than the blue. That's for sure. So this is kind of cool. Let's see here. You can get in here. Flicks really nice. Yeah. Catches well. The action is really good. Now it's brand new. I haven't really had a chance to break it in, so I'm sure that's going to keep getting better and better. That front flip is nice. Now, my only bummer is he changed this. I think he made this not as close to the edge. I wished he would have left this a little more angled, a little more cut out. Because for my big old meaty fingers, I can, I can feel that, right? I can get in there and I can get there, but there's no relief cut really in here. I wish this had been a little more relief cut here. I know the aesthetic is to be perfectly symmetrical and I get that and I appreciate that, but I wish there was just a little better access for my meaty fingers. Smaller fingers, you'll have no problem with this. I mean, it is, and it is chamfered. You can see that beautifully chamfered. I do like that a lot. That's nice, chamfered on both sides. That does help significantly, but if you got big meaty fingers, you know, I'll have to do the fidget factor thing and see how it feels after I've fidgeted with this for quite a while. You know, I might tune the detent. I can tell you it's a little strong for a front flipper for my personal preference. Now, I think Kevin, like from Lefty EDC, I think he'll think this is perfect. <laughs> he'll call this, you know, medium 
to, you know, you call it medium, maybe medium soft, but he'll think it'd be fine for a front flipper. He might want it a little bit more for his reverse flick. The reverse flick is still pretty nice, I gotta tell you. Yeah, still got a nice strong detent for that. So, yeah, I think he would really like it. I think this would be like, if you're lefty EDC for Kevin, and you know, a lot of us were reference him because we, we like the guy. He's just a really awesome guy. He does Devo knives, and I love his knives as well. And, but he likes strong detents. And uh, usually when it's super strong, it's way too strong for me. And when he thinks it's medium to medium light, it's about right for me. And so I think this is gonna be medium maybe a little medium to heavy, not super heavy. And he might think this is perfect, but for me, it might be just a little smidge too strong. So a couple things that I will do eventually is I'm gonna try to put skiff washers in there. And then I'm going to maybe lighten that detent just ever so slightly because for that front flipper, I mean, it's good. It's just a little bit strong, I think. And the reason why I say that is because usually with this kind of front flipper, I should be able to get my finger here and do that without feeling like it's gonna grate the skin off, right? Like that, it does work, but it it's rough, right? It's a little rough and it's gonna make my finger raw. But this part is really nice. I do like that a lot. That's cool. The action's not bad, not bad at all. And it's, you know, as I'm using it, it looks like it's centering up. I think it's probably because it just was set there. Once you use it, everything gets kind of uh, worked in, you know, action, knife, everything, screws, parts, everything settles in. And sometimes that can change how everything lines up. Just using a knife, right? If it's brand new and just first time assembled, it just kind of sets in. It's just like a house that settles. You know, the blade, the construction's gonna settle a little bit as well. And so sometimes things can change ever so slightly depending on how they were assembled. And that's just interesting. So like if you ever take a knife apart and you reassemble it, didn't know, if you didn't know this, you should always try this first. But if you take it apart and it was centered and you put it back together and it's not centered and you're thinking, oh, well, I gotta center it. Take it apart again and carefully reassemble it a second time and then see if that sets it. Because sometimes it was just the way things fit together what threw off the alignment. And by reassembling it, you could just fix that alignment issue without having to try to, try to, you know, put the piece of paper in there, loosen the pivot, loosen the body screws, put it in there, tighten the pivot, and then um, uh, tighten the pivot, and then tighten the body screws, pull the paper out, and then loosen the pivot up, and then bring it back and see if that centers it. That's the kind of a workaround trick, and I have some videos on that. But a lot of times, it's just reassembling can fix that really well. So there you go. Something to think about. All right. So there you go. That's the. First impressions on the Golden Design Works standard. I like that. They changed this. Originally, this, this uh, swedge thing went all the way up to the top. I like that because it gives you a little better contact point here for the flip. That's really nice. Uh, they went to all T8 hardware, and I believe we can confirm that. T8s. There we are. T8s. Can you see that? So, T8s there. Yep. T8s there. And... So it's a hidden hardware. So this is gonna go all the way through to, to that pivot. And then there's probably some screws underneath. Now those may be T6s, that's okay with me. I'm fine with that. I know there's a couple screws on that steel bar insert. I'm not gonna take it apart right now, but you can definitely, I like that. There's one, two screws on the external part. And then once you get there, under, under, underneath there, there's gonna be just uh, some screws that's gonna hold like this backspacer. So it does have a backspacer, by the way. A little hole for a lanyard if you want it to do. A lanyard loop, I don't know if you could really get a lanyard through that. To be honest with you, I just like the way it looks. I don't think it's a lanyard loop at all, quite frankly. But, and, I, and the fact that there's no lanyard, I'm okay with that. I mean, if you're, it must have a lanyard. I guess you could tie it into your clip if you really wanted to. That's super critical. I don't mind no lanyards. I'm not a lanyard fan. And I get people who like lanyards. And I think there are some knives that make a valid case for having lanyards, I do. And I've seen them, and I've handled them, and I, and I get that. But in this case, this is an EDC knife. I don't think a lanyard is really necessary, my personal opinion. Now, you may disagree, and hey, we can disagree. We can absolutely disagree. We don't have to agree on any of this. And that's okay, because you get the knife you want, and you enjoy the things you enjoy. You know, I, I get a lot of knives with lanyards. I wish they weren't priority. It doesn't take away from me enjoying the knife. I'm not gonna be angry about it. I mean, I wish, you know, maybe the lanyard wasn't such a huge priority in some of the knives, because sometimes I think it's a little goofy, right? And for instance, like here's my Evoke Ray Laconico. It has a lanyard loop back here, beautifully executed. I love the fact it's out of the way. Still very functional for anybody who has lanyards, but nice for someone who doesn't want it. Even the one in EMP EDC Relative right here. It's into the backspacer, out of the way, not prioritized, right? But it's still there. You know, because here's the, the regular clip, this is part of their design. I don't mind this. I mean, 
if they didn't have it, would I be okay? I would, I would, and I think it would look a little bit nicer with no lanyard hole at all, personally, just my opinion. But you know what? I'm okay with it you know, there. It doesn't bother me terribly. But for those who love lanyards, they have it and they can enjoy it. But for me, I'm okay with that, right? So there we go. All right, I think, uh, I think that's really it. So we talked a little bit about the, the swedging. We talked about the scales. These are replaceable, by the way. You can get some with a wavy pattern. You can get in blue or, or, or the gray. You can get, this is the dimple design. I would love to see like a diamond textured at some point because I think the idea is he would have different scales. And I would love, love to see it. To be able to swap them out, I would definitely go for like a diamond texture at some point. I think that would be super cool. And if he could contour it a little bit, even with this recessed, oh man, yeah. Just extra amenities. I mean, you could just, you know, make this knife be various, variants of it. And I would be so open to that idea. Totally cool, I think. But that's up to him. You know, it's his venture and I hope he does well. I really like this execution of this knife. I think it's worth checking out if you haven't. He may still have some for sale now that they came in. And if you were on the fence for it, let me tell you, from a first impression, I, I don't think you need to be on the fence. I think you can jump off that fence. If you like some of the th things I like and you agreed with some of my reviews, and you, you kind of, I, I would tell you that I think this is worth trying. But if the aesthetics doesn't speak to you, right, don't, don't, don't get something you don't like the way it looks, because you're not going to want to carry it. But if, it, if you like it, and this aesthetic really speaks to me. I love the fact it still has all this safety. I can still hold a good grip. It's not going to slide on me, but it's still at the same time, beautifully sleek and elegant. This is still like an executive business church kind of knife, right? It's a little bit of all of that. So I really do enjoy that a lot. And I think it's going to break in nicely once we oil it and maybe take it apart. Maybe put some skiff washers in there. We're just going to be nothing but extra goodness on this knife, but still execute it really well. All right, so let's take some close-ups here so you guys can take a look at this. Let's look at that blade. You can see that beautiful blade, nice flat grind. And here's the, the dimpled textured titanium scale on the show side. And here's the uh, clip side where you have the screw as well. Hidden screws with a deep pocket carry clip. And let's look at that liner lock in here. Make sure you can see all of that. All right, and let's look at the back up here. You can see the little hole. You can call this, I don't know, it's a nice little look through, look see through, you know, I don't know. Nice um, uh, uh, jimping all the way across for good texture. You can see all the chamfering around the edge as well. It's really nice. Yeah, I think it's just a really nice looking knife right there like that. What do you guys think? I like that. And I love the little spiral milling pattern on here. Kind of, you know, definitely a, uh, uh, it's not a, a free floating, if you will, pivot. It's definitely, um, <laughs> oh my gosh, a fixed pivot. Um, oh, I don't know what just, my brain just went dead. And you guys are gonna probably write the comments down below, but I just can't remember. It is a fixed pivot, yes, sorry. Uh, don't know why I couldn't remember that. All right, so let's go ahead and again, the drop here, just make sure your finger's up here, you can catch that. So we get a nice close up here, look at that. Nice close up here. I think it's, just, I think it's a really nice knife. I like this a lot. All right. All right. So that's my first impressions, first thoughts on this knife. What do you all think? You have any questions about the knife or the review coming up? If you have any questions about the knife you'd like to see me include in a review, please let me know. I would love to hear from you. Uh, if you have any questions for the channel, for me, any ideas for future Rob's Ramblings, please let me know. I'd love to hear them as well. I always try to include that and I do try to reply to everybody as much as possible. And uh, I, I, right now at the size of the channel, I'm able to. So I appreciate all of that. And I love talking to you guys. So I do appreciate that. Hey, if you found this unboxing, this is just an unboxing first impression. If you, if you found this fun, interesting, worthwhile, entertaining, or informative, would you please consider hitting the like button down below? And if you've already hit that like button, maybe consider hitting the subscribe button. If, you've, if you subscribe and like the videos, it really helps out the channel a lot, it allows me to grow, produce more content, do more things. And I very much appreciate that. And if you've done all that, maybe consider hitting the notification button so you can be notified of future content. And if you haven't already, check me out over on Instagram at robs underscore nerdy underscore knives. Again, that's on Instagram at robs underscore nerdy underscore knives. Hey, thanks so much for watching today. You guys have a great day and a great week. Bye.